Okay, come on. Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, did you know that in Sudbury they're having snow showers, thunder, and lightning? Did you hear that <laughs> this morning? I couldn't believe it. I thought, whoa, that was really, that is really climate change. Wow. Anyways, uh, we're here and we're safe and sound. And uh, I want to take a, uh, this uh, time to just welcome Wendy Smith. I think the last time you were here, Wendy, we, pe we peppered you with all kinds of questions about the Ontario wellness team. And uh, uh, there, this is uh, something, a new title for the Lynn. Am I correct there? Sort um, of, sort of, yeah. Yeah, close. It's an yeah. umbrella organization for a number of health teams, correct? Correct. Okay, so we're, you're going to tell us all about it and update us from the last time. So please welcome Wendy Smith. Thanks, Wendy. Hi. Hi. I'll ask you to mute too if you haven't done it already. Okay, everybody. Okay, so thank you very much to, to all of you for inviting me to meet with you again this morning. I thoroughly enjoyed our opportunity to connect last year. And so I was really pleased that Harriet reached out to me to come back to speak with you today. Um, my goal today is to provide you with an over an update really about what's happening within the Nipissing Wellness Ontario Health Team. And for those of you who may be new and didn't see me last year or you missed the conversation last year, I'm going to just start with a quick review of really what what an Ontario Health Team is. Um, and then I'm really looking to the group for any questions um, that you may have for me following um, a few slides that I've prepared for you this morning. So I'm just going to share my screen and uh, I'll bring up my PowerPoint here. Okay, so are you seeing my screen, Harriet? Yeah, it's, oh, there we go. It's, yes, it's perfect. Okay, so I'm just going to start. So now I apologize, I can't see any faces at the moment. So will you please interrupt me if there's someone with questions? I will do that, yes. Okay, thank you. So uh, the Nipissing Wellness Ontario Health Team encompasses um, at the present time the communities of Powassan, Mattawa, North Bay, Sturgeon Falls, and Nipissing First Nation. And the, the collaborative group of us have created a vision statement so that we're looking to, as time go, continues, looking to have a unified, caring health and social services uh, that are centered around patients, families, and caregivers. So often what I hear people ask me is, what are Ontario health teams? So the Ontario health teams, as, as Harriet was sort of alluding to at the beginning of the call today, are really a, a, um, a, a part of the restructuring of the Ontario health system. So back in 2019, you had the, um, the uh, release of the Connecting Care Act, um, and that act actually took away the LINs and replace the lens with what are called what's called Ontario Health. So you'll see shortly, I have a little graphic for you to be able to put all of the players in, in their place, but essentially the lens are now gone. We have Ontario Health Corporate, and then we have six regions of Ontario Health. And within each region are a number of Ontario Health teams. So we are one of those here in Nipissing. And the goal of the Ontario Health Teams is really to support eval um, evolution that improves components of a, what the ministry is calling the quadruple aim, which is that collectively we improve patient experience, we improve provider experience, we improve population health, and we improve system level cost. Um, and that a fifth element of that in, which is sort of always included in there is the issue of really looking at the system being more equitable, managing diversity, inclusion, and anti-racism. And the overall philosophy is that there's collaboration and an enhanced integration across different providers. The system has been incredibly siloed for years and really trying to break down those barriers to make the system more accessible and more um, more 
more of a better experience for patients. So this is uh, uh, what was produced by the Ministry of Health back at the launch of, an, of Ontario Health Teams. And the top of the screen is really what we've been used to seeing. So a patient or a family member, when you look to access health and social services, you're looking at having to access what you need at various different sectors. And the sectors don't always communicate with one another. There's often loss of information or people are having to repeat their story many times over. It's very frustrating. So on the bottom of the screen, oops, sorry, you'll see the sort of philosophy of these Ontario health teams, which is that the patient is in the center and all of the players that are important to that particular patient are all wrapped around that patient. They all share the patient information and the, there's a seamless transition. So the other question um, I get is how we fit into this structure. So this is the diagram I was saying I would show you. So at the top, we still have the Ministry of Health. And then, as I said, underneath that now, we have Ontario Health Corporate. And Ontario Health Corporate is now the culmination of what used to be 27 independent organizations like Health um, Quality Ontario, like um, the transplant um, organization that managed transplants, all of those kinds of um, organizations are now all amalgamated into Ontario Health as a one major corporation. And then underneath Ontario Health Corporate, we have the six regions. So we are Ontario Health Northeast, and then within the region, we have Ontario Health Teams. Our Ontario Health Team in Nipissing was one of the first, and we will soon have seven teams in the Northeast. Across the province, there's a total of 54 at the present time, soon to be closer to about 62. And then what makes up the Ontario Health Team? So the important message here is that the Ontario Health Team is not a net new provider. What we are is a, we exist as a result of voluntary collaboration of all the people that you see here on the right. And all of these individual organizations are still responsible for their, their care provision. Patients still contact them to, to get the care that they need. But the idea is that by making a team, we're all working together. We're all collaborating and sharing resources. And as I said, being much more integrated. The, yes. the members that are part of the team are continuing to grow as we mature. Uh, okay, Wendy, I just want to, can I ask a question right here? Sure. Uh, is this, uh, so all of these uh, members of this one group uh, get together at some point? Or You are correct. Okay. So the, so the, what happens is the executives, so the leaders of each of these organizations meet um, and they, that becomes the decision-making body. Um, that helps to direct the, the collaborative action of the team. Okay, so that is, I, I'm I'm uh, going to ask a really pointed question here. Is it is it financially motivated, or is that just one piece of it all? Is it the whole idea? I guess is to get share ideas and um, efficiencies, etc. Yeah, there actually is no financial change to any operating budgets for any of the organizations at the present time. So the only thing bringing people to the table to be part of this team is the true altruistic need to be collaborative. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Um, so what has the Nipissing Wellness OHT been focused on? So over the last, since I spoke to you last time, um, and those of you who have worked in teams in the in your, during your, your careers or during your 
personal lives, and we'll know that it's so basic. The basic importance in teams is a level of trust and a level and and building relationships. So, because all of these organizations have functioned entirely independently for years, the real the work has really been about how do we formulate those those relationships that will then enable us to build off that foundation and really truly work together. So we've done an incredible amount of work on that. Um, we've done a lot of work reaching out to our patients, families, and caregivers to really understand what is needed um, and how the system can really change to be more reflective of the needs of our population in Nipissing. Um, and then one of the actions that really came out of our last year of work was what we were calling a year one project. Uh, you may have seen in the news recently that the Ontario Health Team was funded to assist with um, seniors who are more vulnerable in our community and provide them with some support to help keep them in their homes. Um, that project is now being relaunched um, to assist. It'll be a sustained project now over the next um, year and a half or two years. And it's a result of a collaboration with the VON, so the Victorian Order of Nurses. And some of you may have known of a program called the SMILE program, which is seniors managing independent living easily. And it's been active in the Southeast for the last 12 years. And as a result of our year one project, it will now be offered in Nipissing. So I just wanna give you on that note, just a, it's a five minute, what we've created, it's called a storybook. So it, there really, there is no verbiage here. It's just a little bit of a, there's a little bit of a sound in the background, but really it's a book, a, a digital book. And I just wanna show you this, it's a, result of the project. So I'm going to click on it and hope that this all works out for you. Yep. Hey, are you hearing that? Yes. Great. Perfect. Unknown caller. Hello. Hello. Hi, James.
That makes me feel hopeful. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm I'm very glad. I, I'm wondering how uh, I noticed that you said that it says in there uh, funding is so now that this is a, a trial project. So will it continue, Wendy? Yeah, so that's what I was um, kind of mentioning. So the announcement that you may have seen from Vic Fideli back um, just after Christmas was the announcement that our team has been successful with sustainment funding. Um, so we were able to show this and other things to, to government and to Ontario Health, and they have refunded us. So the program is now called the SMILE program, and it's being run in assistance with the VOM. What's, what's the difference between this project and a community hub, for example? I, I um, guess it's geographical, eh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so potentially we can get to that. I just have one other slide I wanted to show you, and then I think there may be that that would be a great okay. question. Okay. So um, if I can just go on here. Okay, so some other highlights of things that the Ontario Health team has been working on over the last year. Um, we have, we did get funded and have been successful at launching a congestive heart failure program across the Nipissing region. So what is now active is that family doctors um, at various clinics across the, the district have a community outreach provider. So a, a cardiac, a health, uh, sorry, I can't speak today, a heart failure educator um, in the community who is working with these individuals to help make sure that the care that they are receiving is monitored, it's best practice, um, and they're continuing to connect those individuals then with all of the, per, the different services they may need um, to make sure that their care is optimized. Um, we've also, through that funding, been able to support North Bay Regional Health Center with the creation of a cardiac outpatient clinic. So that just launched um, last week. And so those two services are now net new in the, in the region. We are also working on a system navigation project in collaboration with the municipalities to really have a one-stop shop um, for individuals that do access digital tools to help them navigate and find services that they need to, um, within the community. Um, there are, as I said, going to be very soon seven OHTs across Northeastern Ontario. And as a group, the OHTs, so the people in my role are working together to form a collaborative to understand then what can we do regionally um, that helps to knit things together to, to expand this um, collaboration and integration to a regional level. And then we're working with partners in the community and long-term care, as well as acute care, to improve system flow and really address the, the problems of um, people being admitted into the hallway and also those the, the patients that unfortunately spend a long period of time uh, designated as alternative level of care patients while they wait for their ultimate discharge destination. And then lastly, we've been, as I said earlier, really engaged in community, um, trying to get out to um, talk to people and to get surveys done to understand more about what is needed in the community. And then lastly, just wanting to share with everyone, here is my um, 
my email. If you don't have answers to the questions you have today, I'm more than happy to receive emails and do my very best to, to answer your questions um, following today's presentation. So I'm just going to stop sharing so I can see all your lovely faces again. Um, and then uh, maybe we can go back, Harriet, if you want to just go reiterate your question and we can go from sure. there. Um, I was asking about, was I asking about duplication of services or no? Yeah, I see so you were. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm just wondering what that looks like. Um, yeah, so that's the beauty of working as a collaborative, as an integrated group, because what we are doing is trying to fill gaps. So the SMILE program is really going to connect people to services that are not in existence or that they are on waiting lists for services and they need something to tide them over between um, so that they don't end up um, going into hospital unnecessarily. Um, so it's not that we're trying to duplicate. It's because it, we're just trying to, um, like I say, fill in, fill in gaps um, where the services aren't being provided. Uh, okay, uh, we have questions here. So um, sure. Uh, oh, Patty, uh, Patty is asking, is East Ferris included? That she means uh, East Ferris Action Club, Action Fifty Club. Yes. So all, all of the people as far, um, so I guess the short answer is yes. Individuals who live in East Ferris are part of our team um, and the, the work that we're doing does include um, services to those individuals. Okay. Um, I don't, uh, Roseanne is asking, I don't see private nursing homes in this list of partners. I, they're where, there, I saw Autumnwood in there. Yes, um, we do have Autumnwood. We have Nipissing Manor, um, yeah. and yeah, uh, Barclay House. Yeah. How about uh, what is it called? Uh, oh, by the Water's Edge. Water's Edge. Yes. Okay. Yep. Do you have any of these teams? Do any of these teams experience shortages of staff, resulting in no shows for clients? Yes. So as you have all heard, health human resources have been an incredible problem across the province um, post pandemic. It was a problem in northeastern Ontario pre pandemic. Um, so it continues to be a problem. And so that's one of the things that the collaborative is really working on to, to understand what is the what are the needs from our population that we serve and how can we reimagine how we how we put people into positions so that we're maximizing the scope that people come with, which therefore we're, we're maximizing the, the services that we can provide. Um, so really trying to look at things differently, but also trying to look at encouraging young people to go into healthcare, um, looking at trying to recruit people to Northern Ontario. We actually are, are hosting a job fair um, on the 24th of February at the Davidi Club. Um, and we actually have 20, 21, I believe, uh, organizations that are going to be there um, to, for people to come through and, and talk to about the positions they have available um, to see if there's matches there. 21. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. And that's an issue everybody's suffering from, a, the lack of, you know, of trained, <coughs> trained workers going into the health field and other things. Yes, um, it's a huge the, problem. Yeah. Okay, there's one more question. Um, the cost of uh, uh, the cal the cost at ho of home care is still prohibitive. How do you capitalize on getting more funding for people who want to stay in their own homes? So that's a phenomenal question, and thanks to Susan for putting that forward. So that really is the one of the core elements of the Smile program. So really looking at. Um, supporting individuals who are in need and most importantly those that are financially unable to manage picking up services on their own um, and so if we can provide them with funding to support them in getting the services that they need um, then then they will be able to remain at home safely and remain out of hospital so that really is the one of the philosophies of the smile program if i can just address that for a minute um I've been dealing with a family member for the last two years who lives alone 
and it, it needed care. And so the team came together very well. It's in a different region. We had good support that way. But when it came down to affording care, if they gave us six hours a week, and she was told that she needed 24-7 supervision. So the cost, <clears throat> when we had someone in for five hours a day, that's 5,600 a month. And to increase that to 24-7 care, $400 a day, which is $12,000 a month. Like, there's no way. Like, she, she has no caregiver living with her. She lives alone. You can't afford, the average person cannot afford that. Hardly anyone can afford that. So, you know, what do you do for these people? We were told it was a four-year wait list for a nursing home. Uh, so, you know, we really got stuck in between a rock and a hard place until finally she was declared incompetent because of her Alzheimer's and it's speed, you know, sped her up getting into a nursing home. But she was alone at home with a little five hours of care. Of care. I'm surprised she didn't get lost. Uh, she was, you know, roaming out of her house and doing all sorts of bizarre things. It's just prohibitive, the costs. People just can't afford it. Services are great, but you can't afford them. Yeah. Um, so definitely something that the system understands. Um, and so, like I say, trying to start to put programs and services into place that help to fill those gaps. I'm not going to for this for <laughs> I'm not going to pretend it's going to be suddenly fixed. Um, there are many, many years of growth that need to happen in order to really address all of the components of the problems we currently live with. But um, I do very strongly believe that the more we work together, the better we're going to be able to address some of these really difficult problems that our that our patients um, live well, with. And money. I mean, I remember politicians saying we want people to age in their homes. We want to help you do this. It's all about money. You know, people can't afford to age in their homes, and it's it's hard if you do have a caregiver. That's great. It's hard on the caregivers, but yes. there are lots of people who live alone now and they don't have caregivers. It's it's a huge expense. I, I understand and I can tell you a personal story. So my husband, unfortunately, four years ago had a spinal cord injury. Um, and so spinal cord injuries come with, um, at least for him, the need to use catheters to empty his bladder, which is something we all need to do. Um, mm -hmm. But the cost of doing that is, um, and that's not what you're talking about, but it's, you know, $2,500 a month just for him to be able to empty his bladder. Oh. And that's not covered. So, um, you know, when when people think about simple things, um, the system needs to be able to address those, right? So like you're saying, being able to provide funds um, that support that individual with being able to safely stay at home and have the care that they need. So um, it's I've heard you. I definitely agree with you. And um, I will we will continue to do everything we can as a collective to try to push government to really recognize the need to put money into the community. Go ahead, Anna. Um, Thank you, Wendy. And we're talking about uh, recruitment of uh, workers to man these programs. Do you collaborate with um, programs such as YES and the EI for uh, training and and is it like a PSW training or are there other types of training that uh, your workers um, have to get before they can be a part of these uh, these home care teams? So um, the first part of the question: um, Are we collaborating with? Yes, actually, yes, we are. Um, okay. So yes, yes is the organization we partnered with to run our our job fair on the 24th, they've been incredibly helpful. So yes, definitely that partnership is in existence. Um, as far as what training is required, we need people from PSWs all the way through to leadership in the system. Um, you know, it doesn't, you couldn't really name a career in healthcare right now that isn't short. So um, it's, it's really, yeah. It's, it's everything and anything. And then once we once we have a group of individuals, we really need to, to change how we staff the system to be reflective of the needs of the population. Because as you know, in Nipissing, we have 25 to 30% of our population who are over the age of 65. And that is going to increase over the next 10 years. 
and the population supporting those are significantly smaller. So um, how do you use the skill set of those below the big population most efficiently to be able to provide the services to the larger population that's above them? So we need to really start to think differently um, and, and really look to our look to leverage this full scope. And I speak to people like nurse practitioners. Everybody doesn't need to have a family doctor. You can have a, a nurse practitioner. You could have a, a family physiotherapist that's covered. You could have a family social worker that's covered, right? All of the different inter, interdisciplinary team members can, can play their part. Questions? Uh, just an observation there, Wendy. Um, first of all, this is a very complex issue to meet the needs of all the seniors, especially <clears throat> in Northern Ontario. It is, yeah. But, you know, that being said, um, you know, we've been fortunate enough to have a connection with the village. And, um, I did reflect to to uh, Michelin and some and uh, actually Sean Charney that what is needed if if that model is going to be a hub, it's a hub, it's a community hub. But so is East Ferris. That mm -hmm. is a community hub. Like that is a community hub, boy. And um, we need we need at least I would say five community hubs within North Bay. And we need them at different parts of the city. So I suggested Commerce Court, and they're actually following up on that. And because I think my thought is, yes, it's great to be in your home. I love my home, and I don't want to leave my home. But I don't want to be alone all the time either. <laughs> no. And my thought is that that feeling of belonging is not just being belonging in your home. It's it's connecting with other people and feeling alive and you know and that i i think you know the the biggest issue and i know that's been identified is transportation how do we get people to these community hubs yes and there there could ferris is in desperate need of a community hub they need one there and uh so commerce court would serve the i guess the north it's not it's northeast end i guess and then uh, the village is serving north. Uh, so maybe uh, another one would be, um, uh, it could be uh, in the West End. So is that five? I, I, th I think there's five different areas recognized in the community. So um, uh, that each of them needs a community hub and I think that it, you know, there are empty schools. <laughs> there's, you know, there's so many uh, opportunities there. It would require a, a short-term investment for long-term gain, and not just in this. Okay, now I'm not asking a question. I'm making a statement that I think it would be also to change the culture of aging. Yes, I agree. And, and help yeah. people feel valued and and like they belong. And we've. Our group has identified that, and that's why we're still together, I think, <laughs> you know, because we value each other and we do a lot of laughing and crazy things like sliding down hills. <laughs> so, but um, not everybody does it, but whatever, you have a good laugh when you see it, so see those videos. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I think that that to me is, that would be a really worthwhile vision is to is to create if you've got the models there now and we know they work you've got this this model for okay i forgot already what you call it um this one year project now it's to to um you know there's a lot of there's a few i do have a question in there how much cost how much is that how are people built for that service or are they built for that service or is it part of our coverage you know um, yeah so what the smile what so the smile program what they do is once a patient is accepted into the program 
then the patient has access to funds to support needs that they identify. So if a patient is onboarded um, to the program and they identify that they're not eating properly because they, whatever the reason is, they their house needs to be cleaned, you know, or tidied once every couple of weeks to support them with maintaining themselves safely in the home, et cetera. Um, then the system has money to pay for those services for that patient. So the patient doesn't, or the patient and family don't have to fund those services, they are covered for them. And the reason that they're covered for them is because as you others have already said here today, um, it's prohibitive for people to come up with those funds on their own on fixed budgets. Um, and if they don't come up with services, then they end up in hospital um, and hospital costs the public $1,500 a day. So for much less than that, the public purse can be used to support people in their homes um, where they want to be. Mm -hmm. um, and, and ultimately, everyone is better off. But, and but, hospital beds are then used for those that need the hospital beds instead of those that have nowhere else to go. Okay, we've got another question here. Or yeah, well, communication between, and that's one of the things that's been identified, right? In relationship to the opposite isolation. Yeah. Uh, will communication between services improve once the electrical form of communication improve access, which currently is lost with faxes? Okay. I think what the individual is mentioned, what Jory's trying to get at is that currently the system operates on faxing information between providers and uh, faxes often get lost, you can't read them, um, information gets sent to the wrong place, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So another thing that's happening across the province is how do we digitize, digitize um, the capacity and make it, make it possible within the system to move patient information between um, organizations connected in their circle of care, so maintaining privacy, but share the information so that people don't have to continuously tell the same story over and over and over and over again, or that providers actually understand the full scope of a problem and they don't just have a piece, right? So that's, that's work happening provincially um, to try to tie all of the different digital tools together so that that can actually be a reality and that's that takes a lot of time. So it's coming, but it's gonna take a while yet. Yes, um, uh, I'd, like, I'd like to talk to you further about community hubs. If Wendy, yeah, sure, we can get together and chat about that. Sure, and yeah. I think it is is a possible next step. And I'd be glad to share what we've experienced over twenty six years. Yeah, I think that would be great, what actually, means, because uh, um, I think it within that that community hub is an opportunity for prevention. Yes. Yes. And, you know, we're all going to get there <laughs> from from birth to death. It's all going to happen. But the, it's a quality of life between those lines, you know, you know, die happy. That's a, that, there's actually a program in Australia called die happy or no, dry, ha die healthy, die healthy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a really and that is, has existed since 1980. And I think in in, uh, in Australia, but. Um, that's a, that's a comment. I, I, I just want to say, I sure appreciate all the things that you're doing. And I like the idea. I was wondering whether this was financially motivated. I know it's, it, it's, it is, it has to be a little piece of it, but, but, uh, it sounds like it's really about caring and I really, uh, congratulations because I know you've been working so hard at this. Uh, from the last time we spoke, you know, there's been some changes. So uh, congratulations to your team. Any other questions? Are yeah. you wondering how to source this? Yes, uh, I have uh, exactly that question, Harriet. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, Wendy, I'm really, really glad to, to see that the silos are trying to be broken down again. And 
all the services work collaboratively. It's it's been attempted a few times, but I really, really this this sounds so promising, and I hope it works. Uh, so exactly. Uh, so if you know an individual who could benefit from this team approach kind of thing, how do they access the uh, what what's the first step in getting accepted as as a patient? Okay, so if you're speaking about like the SMILE program specifically, is that, yeah. So um, what we're, we're just in the process of hiring the coordinator. So what will happen once the coordinator comes on board, there'll be a media blast that tells people how they can do that. Okay, I'll make sure that Harriet gets the information about how you will refer so that if you do know individuals who could benefit, um, you can send send the appropriate information to the coordinator. Um, yeah, and so the program will, essentially we're looking at a launch date of mid-March, okay? So if you kind of keep that in your mind that that'll be when the program op operates, uh, begins to operate, and it will be across the whole district. So, you know, we can have people all the way uh, east as far as Mattawa, south as far as Powassan, and then west as far as Sturgeon Falls. Okay. We don't go north of the city very much because there's another Ontario health team in Temiskaming that's responsible for the people that live north of the city uh, or north of North Bay proper. So, um, yeah, that I hope that helps. OK, um, I, and I just want to make sure people understand that the, the program really is for those who, without this support, would just not be able to give themselves the services they need. So the priority are those that are financially um, strapped and, and really suffering. Um, so there may be those that are sort of sitting with a little bit of money that they could do, but it's not enough. And we certainly understand that, but we're going to start with trying to pick up those that just absolutely have no other options. And then as time progresses, the goal is to eventually be able to, to, to expand the program further. So you're saying marginalized, you're looking at marginalized first and then sort of like the health, the health unit. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the mo those most in need will be the first accepted and, and then we will progress from there. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I just thank you to um, your comment, Harriet. I, I thank you for your um, your words of encouragement to me, but I just want to really make sure people are aware that I'm only the voice and the face of the of the team. Um, the work is really being done by by the group, by the 35 organizations that come together to do this. So, so I, I get the privilege of speaking about it, but it really has limited to do with me and much more to do with all of them. So thank you. Well, um, you're a good representative, I will say. Oh, you, thanks. <laughs> thank you. Very patient. And uh, any more questions? I see Susan's asking, are the new resources available to access if you phone 211? So not yet, but what will be happening is that there will be a um, navigational tool launched on our website. Um, we're looking to launch that by March 31st. And so the program will be on that as a as an opportunity to access it from there perfect because that's a great resource if you don't even know where to start you phone 211 they just get you going in the right direction so if, if your resources and access to your resources are available that yeah. would be awesome yeah exactly yes <laughs> and then oh yeah people are just talking Sorry, about i was going to say if does everyone know that 211 that that number is access to are a really valuable resource. If you don't know which health uh, organization to reach or you have some questions, they'll steer you in the right direction. I think that's operating out of the, the hospital, isn't it? Um, I'm not sure where it's operating out of, but there's been a new launch provincially of a, <laughs> of course, there's always new, new lingo, but there's an 811 number now. Um, so Health Connect Ontario, and so that's the what the province is calling their front door to healthcare. So if you dial eight one one, you have the same. They they can access the two one one navigational tool, but they they also have you also have the opportunity then to speak to a a nurse, um, kind of like telehealth was, 
and they can help then guide you to where you need to be and connect you to local navigators in the in the district. So that's a new launch as of November of last year. Wow. I didn't know that. Did anyone else know that? <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Didn't know. Yeah, I know. It's yeah. there's so much going on. It's hard to keep up, but uh, oh, yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. Well, I hope I hope uh, I I have to voice my my uh good wishes to the next government. <laughs> you know, every 4 years we seem to see so many changes. Yes. And somewhere along the line, I hope the what's in the best interest of the people of our our province and our country you know takes precedence and not have to change and over and over again you know I agree yeah so um I'm just noticing that someone has posted pouring rain on River Bend Road which is in the vicinity of Lavaz which is in the vicinity of Champlain Park so I am going to say that we're canceled today Lindsay yeah, I was saying it's been sleeting rain here all morning. It looks like it's starting to turn to snow, but I would think it would not be good walking on the trail this morning. We will cancel. Um, I, I do want to also just take a moment to, uh, Wendy, uh, we're going to stop now, but I'm going to stay on with the group for a second in case they have some questions. Just sure. to let you know that this is, has been recorded. I will post it on our Living, it's Living Fit channel which is my channel. It's on YouTube. If you have a YouTube account, you'll be able to access it. You should be able to. Uh, I can send you the link. Would you like that to this presentation in the email? I could do that as well. And uh, I do need your permission though to post this. Is everyone oh. okay with that? If you object, one objection is enough not to post. If your screen is on, please, you know, remember that you're you're on, what do you call it? You're on candy camera. <laughs> and okay. someone just asked a question just quickly, I'll, I'll answer okay. um, yeah. about funding to, to train individuals. So, as of this September, anyone interested in becoming a nurse um, or a community paramedic, their full tuition for their for their full course is completely covered um, in Northern Ontario. So that's addressing nursing. Uh, PSWs, some of you may have known there was some public funding for them to rapidly go through their courses. Um, back a year ago. Um, unfortunately, what was happening is a, a large volume of people took those courses, but then didn't follow up with actually becoming a PSW clinically. Oh. So there's some problems following up with that actually making a difference. Um, but we're, they're going to try that with nursing. So if you know anyone who's young and wants to go into nursing, it's going to be a free ride for them. So make sure they know. Wow. Yeah. Thanks for your he uh, questions, Heather. And thanks everybody for, for putting these questions forward, but it just brought one more to my mind and that's about continuity. And I think when you're, uh, I think that is important. And I bet you that's one of the hardest things though, is to find a, say a PSW and that it's consistent, mm -hmm. that it's the same person, because uh, you know, you're developing a relationship with that person. It's very complex. It is incredibly complex. And I it keep really telling my is, team, yeah. if these problems were easy to solve, we would have solved them years ago. So yeah. uh, the fact that they still exist means they are very complex um, and they take everybody's brain. So thank you very much to everyone for allowing me to come and speak with you today. It's always a pleasure. And uh, please use my email if there are additional questions. I am more than happy to, to answer as I can or direct you to someone who would be able to support your, your questions. Okay, thanks. Thank you so much, Wendy. And Thank let's you. connect, okay? Yeah, sure. Okay, bye everyone. Okay, any questions? Any thoughts? Was everybody on when I was talking about um, uh, Thursday where we are meeting at 10, hopefully?
to do a walk. Then we're going over 1130 to the Bay Bistro, a new, the, the new restaurant at New Sioux for lunch. And at one o'clock, we are meeting with Dr. Mary Pat Sullivan and the students. And she has a series of questions on the culture of aging. It should be a very interesting conversation. I'm looking forward to it. And she's very excited about us being there. So it'll be- I have a question. Uh, where do we meet on Thursday morning for the walk? I'm not familiar with that area. <clears throat> Who's asking that question? I don't see. Uh, Yvonne. Oh, it's Yvonne. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so when you go up to uh, the university, before yeah. you, before New Sioux, there's a road. It says Monastery Road, I think. Yeah. And you're going to go down there. You go down a little past the no parking signs, and you turn around and come back and park there. Okay. And you see a great big sign. It's an old sign. It says McKee Trails. Oh, I think okay. it says that. Yeah. If you if you can, you can. Um, you'll see the cars on the side of the road for sure. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, it's about an hour to an hour and a half. Harriet, yes. it's Jonas. I thought yeah. we were meeting at nine o'clock on Tupper Drive to walk and then going oh. over to New Street. Yeah, that's what, what I was. Oh, that's, that's you're what right. That's what it says. Let me see. Place. I got to see what I put on that. But the Tupper Drive walk is just head for the North Bay Golf Course and park there. And we all meet there. Yeah. And then we walk over to the yeah, trail. You're right. You're right. Okay. Oh, man. Yes. Guess what? We're going to Tupper Drive. Okay. <laughs> and but you can park at the golf course at the top of the hill. And okay. then we'll walk down. And we're, we'll all be meeting. It's, it's right at the, where the, the, it's a 90 degree angle. And then you, we'll meet right there. Okay. And we meet at, and we meet at 10. Boy, I'm ever glad you guys keep me in line. This is great. And it is 10 o'clock, not nine o'clock. Uh, I didn't, is that what it says on the calendar? The calendar says 10, I think. Yeah, it's 10 o'clock. Okay, good. It's not a, a laborious walk. We'll walk for an hour, an hour and 15 minutes and then head over to the university, to New Sioux. Oof, boy, oh. glad you caught that. I would have been in the wrong place. <laughs> okay. Um, there's going to be, uh, there's 26 on the list for uh, 100 elements. If you are going, you have to be committed. I have to give a, um, the right number. And so there's space for four more people if you want to go. And we are going to Nature's Harmony on March 9th. Just in case, I'm going to pull this up to make sure yes it's on march 9th we're going to carpool for those who want to go it's the fee <clears throat> is the same as last year it's uh you bring your own lunch and you do need a helmet by the way they have helmets there if you don't have one i don't want to scare anybody away but uh uh we had a blast last year <laughs> Lots of fun. Okay, I'm just gonna double check February again, make sure I gave you the right information. I um, think I did. Um, just wanna comment, did you all get my email yesterday? <clears throat> We're making cards. You know what? That might be a great card to send to Maureen. Yeah. You know, like like individually to send that to Maureen. I you know that it was handmade. They're beautiful. I sent you a photo and I showed them at uh, the village. And it's really it's so simple. It's just going through magazines, it's a little bit of painting on for a background, not or coloring and uh even ripping up paper. And Christine's going to guide us through. And here's the best news. All supplies supplied. 
more uh, Christine is going to supply everything and it won't take more than she said it shouldn't take us we'll be out by 10 15 in that area 10 15 10 30 so 9 to 10 10 30 and let's see what else we got going Zumba on um, Zumba on uh, Thursday is still at 10 o'clock And let's see. Oh, Ice Follies. So Ice Follies is open. The, the form does not come from me. It comes from uh, the organizers uh, from Near North Media Labs. Our guide is going to be Alex Rondo. We meet him at 1030 at Shabujizik Beach, which is uh, um, uh, right by the Marathon Beach. That's formerly Marathon Beach. Harriet, I have a question. It's Joni here. There are yeah. some people who are uh, been away out of you know the country and stuff, like Colleen Cassandy, and she tried to get in and couldn't. Now she wants to try to get in again. Where? What's the site that she goes to? To this Ice Falling site to register, or what? No, she has to come by from the link that I sent in the email. Do you still have that? Um, I could look for it. And uh, see if I can, can uh, let me look for it. Uh, it came from Alex Rondo, so I'll, I, I think I sent it, but yeah, I, I'll I did send it I again. It once, but I might have gotten rid of it because of, uh, you know, yeah, of all the I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Okay, I'll just so make a note of that. It again, that might be helpful for people. Is uh, anybody else interested in going? I was thinking of going, but I have a doctor's appointment at 945 and I don't know if I'd make it in time. Okay. So I don't I want to pick out a spot if somebody else wants to take it. Well, there's no no problem with that, but you, you still have to pay 10. It's $10. Okay. Uh, this is a paid event, but uh, in support of Ice Follies. What is the best place to park for this? Um, oh, that's a good question. Uh, I think you can still park um, uh, on uh, the, the parking lot where close to the marina. I don't know if it's plowed, but I see cars there parking. It, it is but, still open. I drive overnight and I've seen it open. Okay, thanks, Jory. And there's lots of parking I'm, there. I'm not too sure. I thought I saw on the site that they were recommending keep uh, parking, you know, where you go to the market and using the tunnel to get to the Ice Follies. Is that, uh, I've never been to the Ice Follies, so I don't know. Is that kind of a... No, no, the Ice Follies is on uh, on a marathon. You know where the where the, the government, do, well, it's not government, what is it? What is it called? King's Landing. Do you know where King's Landing is? Yes. The dock. That's yeah. where Ice Follies is. Okay. So yeah, the, right there on the beach. Because that would be quite a walk to walk from the tunnel to there. So, okay. They may be suggesting because they're expecting a lot of people. I don't know. But ours, ours is a private tour. It's not likely there's going to be a lot of people there. At, when we're there. And in the daytime. But on the weekend, it, they have all kinds of activities going. So I encourage you. And I'll bring it up on... Um, on um, the 14th before we go on the tour we're going to go to their website and you can see all the activities they're doing and see see some of the ice follies past okay they have they have uh uh just a uh um interviews with these the artists and thing all kinds of things happening uh uh sid bob from what's it called uh Sid Bob is uh, doing a performance on ice on Friday. So there's they're just amazing things happening. And it's also uh, the French Carnival, right? Right now, Carnival. The community is really busy. Okay, I, I see where I was getting mixed up. I got another Monastery Trails I have on the 16th. Okay. I'm just looking through to make sure I didn't miss anything. 
Okay, we're good. So Harriet? Sure. Are you yeah. going to read are you going to send out an email to uh, for the link for people to register for ice falling? Yes, I will do that. If I can okay. find it, I hope to find oh my it. Oh I know. So thank you. Okay. I'm just going to see if I have it. Okay. Because it's not for me, right? It's from yeah, I know. near north. So, but I know I did send it out. While you're looking there, um, is Bay Bistro like, is it a cafeteria or a restaurant or in uh, a restaurant? It's a restaurant. Okay. Cool. Restaurant slash cafeteria. Okay. I would say. So there's a menu and then you just pay yeah, for what I don't have the menu. This is no, no, not. I don't, yeah. yeah. So you just pay for what you order then and. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll have to go back in the annals of my emails yeah. and, see, okay. and see where, where it is, or I can call Alex and ask him to send it again. That might be the best way. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking I'll see what I can do, Joan. Okay. Oh, thanks a lot, Harriet. I appreciate it. Okay. That's it, everybody. You got any questions? Thanks for checking the, I, I know you're checking the, the uh, calendar. I, I really appreciate email. that. I just found the email, Harriet. Oh, good. Okay. Can I just forward it to you? It's got all the, the, the links for going to the luncheon and everything. Okay, sure. Send it to me. Okay. I probably okay. have it somewhere, but I I'm I'm up to uh 16 emails before I get off here. It was sent out January 28th, so I'll send it to you. Okay, okay thank you. Okay, sorry about that. Any other questions or okay. It is not it's just started snowing now, but it's very heavy. So, um, you know, dance around your kitchen or <laughs> just move. That's all. Just move. How did you like that presentation? I'm curious. <clears throat> Hopeful, but we're not there yet. No, we're not. Yeah. But you know what? There's a lot of people. It's encouraging to know there's a lot of people like Wendy, that are very caring. They're in that business for a reason. I think the higher up you go and the more bureaucracy there is, you may lose touch with people. I don't know. Yeah, it's still a system that needs work. <clears throat> I'm glad they're working on coordination because sometimes the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. And like I spent a lot of time this year talking to different caretakers who hadn't been in touch with each other. And it, it, oh, it, it was a mess. <laughs> So there's lots of work to be done, but I think they're on the right track with, um, you know, with coordinating and having people talk to each other. That's huge. Yeah. Um, I was really wondering if it was more financially motivated, but I, I do think it, it is part of it. Oh, sure. Where they, or they can bring services together, you know. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. Okay. Talk to you later, everybody. I got still got to go and walk my dogs. <laughs> Anybody else have to do that? Okay. Bye.